celebrating 20 years of possibility. I'm Kelly Harper, and I believe anything is possible. This is Anything is Possible, part two of my interview with the head coach of the Lady Vols. And by the way, she attended the University of Tennessee, <laughs> Kelly Harper. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you. Now when I look back on my life, um, the tough stuff was the best stuff. The places of breaking were really the places of making, right? There was a refinement that happened. There was, you know, the, the sandpaper started out coarse and it got the rough edges off, but it got finer and finer. It still was grit and it still was rubbing away all the, <clears throat> the parts of me that wouldn't make for a smooth surface. And whenever I see somebody that has a smooth surface, I, I look for the, <laughs> for the file or I look for the, the paper. Um, talk to me about challenge, change, and difficulty in your life. Because somebody just looking at you would think, Perfect parents, they're coaches, teachers. You go to UT, Pat Summit says, bling, you're anointed to be the next one. You, that ain't the way it goes, sister. It's not the way it happened. Not the way it happened. I think, you know, I look back, I think, um, throughout my life, some of the, I don't want to necessarily say adversity, but some of the things that allowed me to polish myself um, or that polished me inadvertently. Um, when I was a player, I had some injuries. I had knee surgeries I had to recover from, and it made me appreciate my sport probably a little bit more, and it probably developed me mentally um, for, for let's, coaching. Let's hang out there for just a second because I don't know that I've taken the time to kind of drill down on the psychology of injury recovery. It's difficult. Right? So you, you got something going on with your knees. What happened to your knees? Yeah, so I tore my ACL in high school. I got to college, played a year, and tore my ACL again my sophomore year. And, you know, for, I think one of the things that young athletes right now have a hard time with is who are they when you take away sports? Boom, 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 boom. You know, say, ooh, say more about that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something that we we deal with, we work through. And let me tell you, like our team, we have some amazing young women. They're also athletes. You know, they're, mm. but they're, they're young women first, and they're gonna do some amazing things. And I think for me, when I was in that space, it, it was difficult because that's all I knew. Right. You know, and then I was able to, to work and get back. And then when I, was, um, when I was cut from the WNBA team, again, I cried because who am I without being an athlete? Uh, I had to learn that, and I think, I think that's a difficult space for some of these young women who they've played basketball all their lives. They've been told how great they are at basketball all their lives. They've awards and honors, and then all of a sudden it's gone, and then they have to know who they are. They have to be confident with who they are, and that's, I think that's part of our job as coaches, to help them find that. So who did you find out that you were without the story, without the success, without the, yeah. I was a teacher. I was a teacher. Um, and I, that goes back to, to my upbringing. Um, I'm, a, I'm a coach, but I'm a teacher. And, and that's the part of the game that I love the most. And, you know, without, without basketball, I'm, um, I think I'm a good person, you know, and I try. I love life. Um, I enjoy it. And I've changed. Obviously, now I'm a mother. But, but back then, I had to learn who I was. And, um, what, so as, as a teacher, what do you think you're here to teach? You know, I want people to enjoy life. Mm. I, I want every day to be wonderful. And now granted, you're going to yeah. have hurdles every day, but I want people to embrace those. I want people to find the beauty every of, of life every single there's something i don't care how bad your day was there's something and you know i think that's important for me to share with with young people uh so you you're saying a, a word that 
that really means a lot to me, the word enjoy. Anybody who knows me knows that that's a, a, a real part. The prefix en means to make, cause, or create. So if you are enjoying your life, you are taking an active role in making joy or making joyful what you do. And it's interesting that you would say, I'm trying to teach people to enjoy their lives. It's a choice. Say more about that. It's a choice. You get to, your, your life isn't what just was placed in front of you. It's not the hurdle. It's, it's how you react, how you respond to that. It's your attitude towards, you know, and I think. Who um, taught you that? Who taught you? I think I've learned that. Hmm. You know, I don't think that's anything that I, that I knew 16, my dad set me down. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that. I think it's something that I have, um, I think it's something I experienced um, early on. I didn't know how to define it. Right, right, You know, right. I, I felt like I was always grateful. Right. And, and always, um, you know, I, I grew up in a Christian household and, and that's a, that was a big part of our lives and, and how my parents lived was important to me. It was an important model for me. Uh, but, but, you know, they enjoyed what they did. My dad loved working on the farm. Bingo. Hard work. He loved it. And it wasn't easy but he loved it. And I think that was, you know, if you can love that, then every single day, I think we found love and en enjoyed what we did. And when you, when you, then as I get older and start defining it, it's love and life. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. So let's transfer this to coaching because I said I want to talk about your coaching philosophy. How much of teaching, which is your calling and your purpose, is direct instruction? Do this, this, and this. I expect this, this, and this. Wait this for me. How much of it is direct instruction and how much of it is the person that you are in front of them? It's, it's probably equal. It really? is equal. I, th I think so because, um, you, you know, so beginning every practice, we go around and say, somebody has to say something positive that happened to them that day. Wow. And, you know, if you practice at eight in the morning, which we don't typically, sometimes we have early morning practice, I'll tell them something happened. You may have to really think at it, but something was positive. Maybe you hit all green lights driving in today, you know, but something positive happened to you today. You need to find it. And I think that's just a reminder of how grateful we should be and, and always looking for that moment. Because if, you, if you're always looking for the negative, you're going to find that. Right. you got to search for that. Right. And, and that's something that we try to do. So that's maybe me directing a little bit of, okay, someone say this, but also me being in front of them, telling them how important this is, this little minute thing, how important that it is. Um, how's the game today? What are you... What are you coaching for? I know, first of all, you have to recruit incredible talent, first of all, they, you've gotta be talented, but then they gotta have the right mindset because it's, there's a whole world of difference between having a skill set or what I call a will set, right? The, the will to win is a, is a whole other thing. So you gotta have incredible talent. But today's players, um, they are besought by social media and now you got name, image, and likeness. Now everybody wants to be a brand now. So I would imagine that the dynamics of bringing individuals together to operate as a team, having that team have a strategy to win would be, what, what are you dealing with? It consumes my job. I mean, it, it's a big part of what I do uh, because you're right, we have to get the right people when we say the right people, they have to be talented, but they have to bring the intangibles that we need as well. They have to want to win, but they have to want to be a great teammate. They have to want to high achieve. They have to work hard. You know, so many things. They have to be a good person. Um, but then we have to be, as a staff, as a coaches, we have to be understanding of the world they're living in. It's very difficult. It is very difficult, the pressure of not just being an athlete at Tennessee, but the pressure of being 
right now. You know, it's so easy for them to look on a social media account at their best friend and see their best friend living their best life. Because look at all these posts. Look how beautiful she is. You know, then you have to strip it down. Well, yes, we use three filters on this photo. She only used the best photo. She didn't take a photo of the bad day. Right. Um, she didn't tell you all the challenges that she went through. All she's telling you. So their sense of reality is, is skewed. They, they understand it, but it's hard when time and time again, all you're seeing is perfect. And they're, they're trying to live up to perfect. You can't. Nobody can do that. And it, the, the pressure on them as young people, not just our athletes, but young people in general, it's a very difficult time for them to be growing up. And I think you see a lot of mental health issues, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression because they're trying to live up to this perfect image of who they're supposed to be in their mind. And So how does that, how do you coach that? Scary. I mean, it's, it's hard. And we just have to continue to remind them of who they are without basketball, who they are as people, um, you know, try to reinforce the, the positive things and try to remind them reality of social media and, and just try over and over to, to get that message across. What's a practice like with you? Let's say I play for you. What do you expect from me? What's, what's practice like? Yeah, if you will give me great body language Great effort. Well, let's let's hang up. Let's hang <laughs> you don't right want to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I want I want to I want to stick right there for. What is great body language? If I come in here practice, and um, you want me what? I want you to look like you are having the time of your life. What? I want this to look like you enjoy every moment of it, because you should be. I know it's going to be hard, but it's okay. Hard work and enjoy. You can enjoy hard work. You can have fun. With hard work so i want to see a smile i'll be honest with you really i do and when and when they come in if they're not giving you the right body language i have asked them to walk out rework this and come back really i have they don't have to do it very often because this is an unbelievable group but i think they should enjoy this it shouldn't be you should come ready to practice you don't yeah. Right. What time does practice? How are you about when practice starts? How are you about drills and that kind of thing? Are you? Yes and no. Uh, okay. So I think there's some give and take. Um, so if we practice at two o'clock, two o'clock, the, the time's going to uh, go down on the clock. You'll see it. Two o'clock is going to go off. You're going to be with our strength coach and you'll have six minutes or so to get ready with him with stretching. And that's your time to kind of get your mind right with where we are. And we're going to get together and we're going to talk about what was the positive for the day. I'm going to then lay out what practice is going to look like. I'm going to tell them, here's my expectation today. Here's what we're focusing on. Here's what we have to get better at. So you, so a great coach has to plan practice. Oh, yes. You've got to be prepared and you've got to be working on specific things for a specific reason. I actually spend a lot of my time daily on practice planning. And you would think that it wouldn't take that long, but I, I want to get it right. I want to get the right drills in practice. I want my assistant's input. Uh, I want to get the right uh, order of drills because that matters. I want to get the right length. Um, I want to get it right. So I spend a lot of time developing our practice plans each day and right. then explain it to our team. So, so I come into practice. First thing is you want that body language right. You want to see a smile, want me ready to practice. I cut you off. You were going on to something else, though. You said body language. I, I need great effort. Great effort. What does that look like? Um, going hard, eager. And if you don't see that effort? Well, again, I don't have to worry about that very often at this point, but if I do, I have to pull you aside. I like to have little co side conversations first. I might pull you out. I'm not real sure what's going on, but you, you're not playing hard enough or um, something to that effect. And if I, if I know you as a person and I know that's not going to work for you, if I need to call you out in front of the team, I will call you out in front of the team. Um, don't have to do that often because I, most of our players, I understand what makes them tick and we can get them in a, in a place where Here they're going go. hard. So you got to have energy, great effort. And what else? Toughness. Yeah. You got to have a toughness about you. Um, you don't want to be there. You got to practice hard. Uh, with the toughness, a great attitude. 
can't can't be moody. You, you can't be eye rolling. You can't be questioning. You can't uh, snap back. I mean, you gotta have a great attitude. And some of that's toughness. I need to see that too. But those things, honestly, effort, attitude, body language. Those are the three things. If you bring me those every day, then all I get to do is teach. I don't have to motivate you because you are self-motivated. I just have to teach. As soon as one of those three things slide, that's, I, I will, I don't handle that very well. How'd you feel? <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you feel about your team this year? I loved where we were at with our team chemistry. It was it was amazing. They absolutely loved each other, and it showed in the locker room. It showed on the court. They were playing for each other. Um, we rarely had bad practices, um, and that's a that's a really good thing. It was a big step forward for us. Um, you know, and I think also I love the competitiveness of this group. I love the fact that every single day in practice they were competing with one another. So when you get in a game, they're still, it's not anything new, you know. So I, I love the growth. Uh, they were fun to coach, man. I mean, they were so fun to coach. You think you're set up for a great? I think right now, um, you know, our culture was great. Our, our team was good. The experience that we had was really good. Um, we're in a good space. There's a lot of work to be done. So setting, we're in a good position, but we talked earlier, you have to be intentional about that team chemistry. You have to be intentional about bringing all these different personalities together because it's gotta be one. The end product is one. You know, it's not 14 or 15, it's one. And so to do that, it doesn't just happen. It takes a lot of work that starts as soon as they get on campus. I love possibility. I, I love starting with a blank canvas and creating something. I love the potential and possibility of every human being. It's the thing that excites me most is that a person would, would find their joy, connect it to purpose, and then use it to be a peak performer in service to others, right? Yeah. Like if I can be part of turning on that light or flipping that switch, that's my, that's my sweet spot. So I'm always wanting to ask people, what is it you wanna say? What is it you want the world to know, especially about the recipe for possibility in your own life? But what do you wanna communicate? So many people assume that because I came here, was gonna be a coach, that my dream job was the University of Tennessee. Um, I didn't really have a dream job. Um, and so my being open to all possibilities mm. allowed me to be here. You know, my, um, I just wanted to be the best that I could be wherever I was. And I wanted to be able to be impactful at whatever school I was at or whatever occupation I was in. I just wanted to have an impact. And when the opportunity came up that I could come home mm. to be in my home state, to be at my alma mater, to be coaching the best program in the country. What an amazing opportunity that I didn't close doors early on. You know, I um, I was I was let go um, several years ago at a job, and if that had stopped me, mm. I wouldn't be here today. But that didn't stop me. That allowed me to grow. So to me, possibilities. Uh, you don't know what they're going to be. You you don't know where they're going to take you. You have to put yourself in the best position that you can be in for when those possibilities, those doors are opened, that you are ready to take that opportunity. When you got let go from that job, was there depression? Was there, uh, and, and what, what did you learn? I think there was doubt. Ooh, doubt is a booger bear. Yeah, yeah. And um, I fought it. Like, I fought it now. You know, but when I stripped it down, I was really honest. There was doubt, um, and fortunately for me, um, things happened really quickly. I got back in the saddle real quickly, um, took another job, and worked through that for a year. Didn't know until retrospect right. that I was working through that, but I was. 
Yeah, you know, when you, when you talk about um, your ACL and, and rehab, my friends that are athletes tell me the first time you try it, after it's been busted, there's doubt. But you try it, you keep trying it, and then one day the tweakiness isn't there. And you're like, oh. And I don't know how many tries it gets to takes to get to O, but to have the courage to try until right. is is that thing. And I think your story is a story of possibility because you'll keep trying until you get to O. Yeah. And I think I think you got a whole lot of success in front of you. I will not make the mistake I made with our friend, Pat Summit. You know what I said to her? I'm sitting there talking to her and I said, you think you still can play? And she said, I can beat you. And I said, well, bring it. And I challenged her to one-on-one -on -one basketball. That was the dumbest thing <laughs> I ever did. I'm not gonna do that with you. I'm gonna respect Kelly Harper for who she is. I don't want a side conversation about my attitude, my work ethic, my engagement, whatever it is. I'm coming to you with the right body language. My body language is one of humility and gratitude. That's what you see here because I'm so grateful that you have shared your story of possibility with us and I wish you, I wish you much, much success going forward. You are a really special person and thank you for being here today. I appreciate that, thank you.